All right, so we just landed in Moab. We've got the guys here. I think eight of us just piled out of the uh, epic there and meeting up with Hunter and Davis, who drove through the night to bring us the vehicles. What's up, Davis? What's up? How's the drive, buddy? All right, well. All right, how are you doing? Good, man. We got the Eagle, we got the Hilux, we got the Razor, and we got Hunter. And Hunter, fortunately, is not wearing shoes, so that is a good sign. Yeah, airing them out, man. Just don't put shoes on ever again. So, we're ready to rock and roll. Cody, what do we got going on here? I am uh, going to Afghanistan like today. Afghanistan today? Yes. To, uh, that explains that, I guess. See what it's all about. Yeah, are you excited? Yeah, see if we can find some ISIS. Yeah, should be good. Uh, you're actually driving the ISIS vehicle though, aren't you? Yeah. You know yeah, they well, run around in the Hilux, right? Yeah, so yeah, we'll talk you, about uh, you actually, it's almost like stolen valor. You look like an ISIS soldier who stole an American military uniform. <laughs> and you're not doing a good job of fitting in. <laughs> All right, guys, we are here in Moab, Utah, and today we're just gonna show you what Whistling Diesel does. Basically, uh, we're, we helped him out, kind of get his vehicles out here for uh, the Hilux testing, and he's got this big plan of how he's gonna put this vehicle through its paces, right? That's his thing, he, he tests vehicles. Um, and so the Hilux, he's done a lot of testing so far, and as you, you can see here in a minute, it is a little banged up but it still runs and drives great surprisingly. I pulled it on the trailer last night and that thing is like still like mint. So today we're gonna take it on a couple of very like notorious Moab trails, starting with uh, Hell's Revenge, um, take it on some of those big obstacles, probably take it over to Potato Salad Hill. And then from there, if everything's still working, we'll take it over to the Cane Creek Trail, which is a little bit more like open desert, sand, that kind of stuff, and followed by a really gnarly climb out of a canyon. Um, so that's uh, today. Never ends, man. I feel like we could just do a full vlog series of buying gas station. It's amazing I'm able to keep this incredible figure, right? I know. I'll be posting my diet tips online soon. As soon as I figure out what they are. Only tool I bring with me everywhere. That's one thing this was not going to be short of today was air in the tires. He tried climbing that hill with a solid 90 psi <laughs> on semi truck pressure over here. We'll try this again. All right, here we go. That was 
it's like, a, it's like a level. It's like a stock height truck. There's like nothing done to that. So that's pretty good. Half the time you're right on your belly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your turn. All right, my turn. Here we go. steering wheel. See, oh man, give me a chance. See the shaft right here, this little broken piece? Not supposed to look like that. Also, he can't get it out of first gear. So, between not having steering and not being able to get out of first, the Eagle's not flying very well right now. Back to high lift up. Hold up, way back to high lift. Go, go, go. Feel it out. That's insane. <laughs> I'm buying a highway for sure. You're rad. Hey, you're not driving. <laughs> I know. I don't know what I'm, I'm doing over here. My...
breaking the wedge. Yeah, just go around the loop right here. You can do it again? Guys, I need you to stop what you're doing real quick and go subscribe to the Trailmater YouTube page. So that's Rory right there. He's the man getting us out of the pickle here. And he's done it multiple times for us down here in Moab. You can see Trailmater, I think that right there. Is it spelled Trailmater? Just like your license plate? Yeah. Just like that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because his channel is all about off-road recoveries down here in Moab with this gnarly dually uh, recovery truck. So like, subscribe, give that man some love. My name is Rory Irish. I'm the owner of Moab Motorsports and operator of Trail Mater Tow Truck. This is an 82 Chevy pickup. It's originally a one-ton truck. Um, shortened the wheelbase and everything to turn it into a rock crawler. And then it slowly became an off-road tow truck. It's got a 454 big block and uh, four-speed standard. And uh, the motor, tranny, and transfer case are all stock Chevy got a 205 uh, transfer case which got a twin stick so it's much like an atlas i can engage just the front or the rear axle tell me about those shifter knobs uh, where do those come from um those are uh snap-on wrenches um actual functioning snap-on wrenches um funny story behind the the big one uh the big shifter is actually the size for a jeep axle nut so <laughs> if i need to i can pull my shifter off and take uh take the axle nut off of a jeep or a toyota <laughs> Must be a pretty expensive set of shifter knobs, huh? Yeah, it, it was, but it, it looks cool. And, and cool <laughs> yeah. has no price. <laughs> I agree. So how, how many winches you got on this thing? Uh, six total. Six total? Yeah. So uh, I got three out the back, one out each side, and one out the front. Um, I, I carry enough spare parts and stuff like that. I try to keep everything I need on it. I'm pretty um, serious about maintenance all the time on it, so it's, it's doing what it needs to. But um, like I said, I have an onboard welder onboard air, the six winches I have. I carry spare parts not only for me, but also for any rigs I might work on. My, my favorite thing about it is when I, the look of it. Just the look of it? The, the look of it. Um, I started building it and then I bought the, or then I started my, my off-road shop and everybody was like, well, now you can put a new cab on the wrecker and make it look nice. And I was like, hey, I'm, I'm going for something. I'm, I've got a plan. Yeah, I, lo I love it just the way it is. I love it. Ah, these are this 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 guy's the man. He saved us once before. Is she a godsend right now? He knew we were down here. He just he could he could smell he could smell recklessness, and he just made it way down here. So we're uh, we're gonna see if we want to replace the steering box or whether we want to try to drag it up. I mean, he could pull us up the exit of Hell's Gate. The thing about the Eagle is. It's a really great car, but it's designed for kind of high-speed desert stuff and low-speed rock crawling. I try to do high-speed rock crawling, and it doesn't, it doesn't... I'm used to driving the Brodozer and my other big stuff with hydraulic steering down here where parts don't break, so... So that's non-factory. That? All right, that's non-hydro no, assist. No. So it's just factory. Yeah. So yeah, I'm certain I've got one at the shop. Yeah. Um, yeah, what do you want to do? Are you worried that even if we fix that, our trans isn't gonna? So that is the issue, is we've got the trans that's not engaging. Like I said, if we can, if we can right, get it yeah. to steer, if we can get out here that makes dragging steer. it out a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, if I can get it to steer, I think it'll, it'll, it'll drive out. So let's, uh, we'll go grab a steering box. Okay. Up inside my tool case. Oh, no. Are all the tools? Oh, that's the worst. Let me see. Salvage my batteries. Nah, all your tools will be fine. They need a little bit of oil on them. It helps. I'm not seeing any. Future okay. Okay. 
Oh, well, damn. Is that the battery? Yeah, that's what was working. I was like, I that's the one I was touching with my palm. <laughs> okay, what? Well, well, back up a little. Hold it right there. Bill Collins. Oh, you can go back up the way you came. Yeah. Hell yeah. It was unreal. Nope, no hams this time. All the hams are gone. <laughs> back tires. <laughs> too, so narrow. That's fun. <laughs> I, you know, I made the mistake of kind of getting frustrated with the Eagle this morning when it broke and then the steering box broke and had, you know, a handful of little issues, probably mostly driver error, but uh, I fall back in love with it every time I get behind the wheel. The fact that we can cruise out of Hell's Revenge, which is a pretty bumpy trail, at 20, 30 miles an hour and it's just one hand on the wheel cruising, even with the steering box that's not right for it, you can't help but love this vehicle. And so this is Rory's recovery rig and it was one of the original like wrecker style off-road recovery trucks down here in Moab. And let me tell you what I like about this thing. Obviously I got, I'm a very, you guys know that we use recovery equipment all the time. This is very specialized because this can go on any trail in Moab. There's a lot of recovery outfits down here, but they can't go to every trail. Rory can go anywhere and he can crawl backwards over like a lot of the rock crawlers. So the thing about it is he's kept it pretty simple. It's got leaf spring suspension, which is like just durable as could be. It'll, it'll last forever. It's got all the one ton running gear. Um, he's got like the, the full hydraulic, the full hydro steering? Yep. Full hydro steering. Back here, he's got this giant wrecker, which is like, this, this may look like just rat rod-ish, like it's just for fun. It's not. He actually lifts Jeeps up right here and gets the front end of them off the ground and drags them. If you can't, if you can't tell, I used to work in the oil field driving a winch truck. Yeah, there you go. I can tell now. <laughs> that's exactly like a winch truck. Anytime you can pick something up and just drag it, you're in good shape. So that's why this thing is built like this. It's got winches on both sides so you can pull people up the sides of the hills. 
It's got one big winch in the middle, right? Yeah, I've got two. Oh, you got two, there you go. I've got, got, backup winch I've got a 17.5 down there, I've got a 9,500 here, and I've got a 10,000 out the back. Plus the two on the sides. Two on the sides and one on the front. Truck has six winches on it. It is made to pull anything out of anywhere. And not only is it good at recovering, but it also has all these different spare parts on it. It's got like, he's, look, look at this. He had a steering box that we need literally sitting at his shop. He had his guy run it to me. We had our steering box within, I don't know, 20 minutes. Like that's insane. So anyways, this guy, I keep telling him, he's got to push his channel harder. He's got to do more videos because can you imagine watching videos of this thing going out working all day? Like that's way cooler than anything we do. So Rory, that's my challenge to you, man. Do more videos. And you guys already that. know, Click, the, click down in my description below. It's gonna have a link over to Rory's channel. Give him some subscribers, give him some views because honestly, the man deserves it. There's a lot of guys out there doing recovery work, but this guy's actually got like the recovery. He's not just a, re not just a tow truck driver. You're a mechanic too. Like you know what yeah. you're doing. So love it, man. Appreciate your help out here today. No problem. Together for a while. That was basically the windshield wiper came off at like 50 mile an hour and hit me in the forehead. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that worse than the 50 cal or about the same? No. The next day. I feel I'm coming from somewhere else. Uh, I might need to. We're not going to do it unless you're okay with it, alright? She's like, okay. Alright, Rome. Hey, we're here. <laughs> Today is going to be a wild day. You may have already kind of picked up on what's going on. Um, picked up? Oh, I see what you did there, yeah. You may have already sling-loaded. <laughs> oh, that nice. didn't, didn't work as well. I still like it. That right there is one of the coolest helicopters ever built. Like, ever. It's also one of the, like, craziest and most complicated mechanical Great. contraptions I've ever seen. Basically, it's a K-Max helicopter. has two blades that intermesh like this. So two blades that counter rotate means you don't need a tail rotor, which means you can pick up a lot of heavy shit, such as maybe like a Toyota Hilux, I don't know. But uh, we're about to meet up with uh, Marcus and the guys from Mountain West Helicopters, and we'll see, uh, see where things go from there. So I'm Neil Jensen, I'm the chief pilot for Mountain West Helicopters. So normally what I do is I, I primarily fly this helicopter, it's K-Max. Uh, in the summer we fight fires, winter we do a lot of power line work, construction work. We also do rehab projects for the Forest Service where we drop mulch and straw on, on old fires, pretty much. Okay, so what are we doing today with this helicopter? We're going to be lifting up that truck and dropping it, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, what are your expectations or your feelings about doing all of this? Uh, I'm excited. I mean, it, I think it'll be fun. I haven't dropped a truck before. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's just 25 feet. 25 feet doesn't look like 25 feet when you're 25 yeah, when you're yards up away. Yeah, 50 feet looks a lot higher than 50 feet. Kill. So, hands, grab everybody that's going to be on the ground. Head over to that pin drop I just sent you. Just make sure it's in a good spot away from any structures, any power lines, anything. And let me know when you're there. Do you want to let my plane take off? Okay. And then you guys go. Okay. And then we'll drop, and you guys can drop whatever the dropping part well, of it. Our first I'm not drop is only going to be like 50 feet, so we're going to be low level over there. As our long second as drop is going to be a high one. So before we do the second one, let's coordinate on that because we're going to be 10,000. Okay. Yeah. So, um, sure cool. Uh, Keaton Kerrigan's coming with me, right? You ain't going in the helicopter. Yeah, I'm right now. You want? I'll take care. We're only taking two up in the alley. We're taking four. Who? Two camera guys, Whistling and Dave. Yeah, that that's fits, four. That fits five, bro. You're just sitting back like this? Uh, I'm sitting in the back like that anyway. You sit up front, like shotgun. Shut up. You. I'm telling dad. Don't you do I'm it. telling dad. As your mother, I don't allow it. All right. Just to run you all down real quick on what we're planning on doing here. So we plan this three years in advance now. So it's been a long time. You called me a week ago. <laughs> it's uh, built right here in the US in Connecticut. And it's pretty unique with the intermesh rotor system and it can lift more than it weighs. It weighs about 5,200 pounds sitting here and it can lift up to 6,000 pounds. So you don't even have a tail rotor. So they nope. just counter spin. So they spin Correct. opposite directions. Yep. What are your actual thoughts on what's gonna happen here? On the truck? With everything. Just walk me through the first drop. 
Uh, the first drop is going to be, I mean, pretty straightforward. I'm going to lift it up and fly it out there. And I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to. What's going to what's the truck going to do? Upside down, nose dive? I think it's going to nose dive a little for the raft of the water. But, but that's not a 200 foot drop. That was a 200 foot. I love how optimistic you are about this. Taking off in 15 minutes, yeah. and we'll wait until he's gone. To... All right, so give you guys a little rundown of what's happening here. Um, Cody's idea is obviously to drop the Hilux from the KMX helicopter. It's a great idea, but it's also we have some conflicting views on how high we should go with the first drop. Cody is convinced that this thing can fall from space and still be drivable. I'm not that convinced. I, I believe it's tough. Trust me. I watched it in my web yesterday, and I'm like, mind is blown at what this is capable of. However. I want this first drop to be like, holy shit, that thing just fell from 100, 200 feet and it's still driving. So right now we're having a little bit of a discussion on how high to make that first drop. Fortunately, I'm the one that has the final radio call to the K-Max pilot, so I can be like, hey man, bring it down a little bit. Uh, even though Cody's gonna keep telling him to go up, 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 up. I think we'll probably drop it from, hopefully right around 100 feet. And that's pure free fall, guys. If it runs and drives after that, that's impressive. Next drop after that will be to the moon. We're gonna go as high as the, the K-Max will go. Day like this, it's pretty hot. Um, you're not gonna wanna go much higher than about 12,000 feet, especially going to 12,000 feet, you don't realize how difficult it is to find perspective on the ground to drop something. So he's gonna be way up there and he gets, hits the hook. Like we have to clear out a solid like half mile radius on every side to make sure that it has a free fall drop zone that's not gonna hit anything important. So that's another critical factor. Um, biggest thing that we're trying to like guess right now is how it's gonna fly when it's free falling. Obviously the motor's in the front, so we think it's gonna nose down. So with that, we've taken the front straps, these sling load straps are 10 footers, and then the rears are 20 footers. So it's gonna pick up a little bit like this. So when you guys see it pick up, don't think that it's tangled. It's gonna be a little bit angled like that. And then the idea is once it drops, gravity starts to catch up and it levels out and lands like that. Wishful thinking probably, but. So Lance, how are you feeling? What are your thoughts? I'm feeling good. I'm ready this time. Think your drone can uh, descend faster as the truck descends? I think it can. Since I mean, since we're on the lower drop, it'll be just fine. I'm not gonna be able to go up if they're going up to 12,000 foot. <laughs> but I'll see if I can catch it on the bottom half. <laughs> you hear the air is kind of thin up there. Yeah. <laughs> Right into the sun. Hey, check this out. K Max Hilux B105. It's about to go down, literally. They're gonna drop that Hilux. They're probably what? What's that? Two, three hundred feet right there. Still going up. <laughs> the Hilux! There it is! They drop them so far away. There it is, Hunter. <laughs> oh, man. Operation Hilux drop. Woo! I don't know if she's going to drive home. Damn.
two. It's much, much higher this time. You're, you're at least two, 2,000 feet, maybe 3,000 feet right there. God, he is up there. Did, I don't know, you probably saw that because you're watching the video, but like, that was mind blowing. The first drop was like, cool, and it was like, oh man, that was a hard hit. Second drop was just like, it was like watching a cartoon. Watching that thing fall and fall and fall and fall and kept on falling, and you, the, right when you thought it was gonna hit the earth, it had like another two or three seconds of free fall. So, as you can see, it didn't survive either drop, um, and uh, I think we needed to drop from like maybe 50 feet at the most if we wanted it to survive, and it maybe would have, but even that 200 foot drop or 250, whatever that first one was, it kind of nosed into a ditch, and that was just enough to kind of like impact and just banana it. But as you can see now, I've never seen the car this flat even under like a car crusher. It is like flat, flat. No, I already said that way earlier. What is it's, the it's, odometer? It's only got 100 miles on it. It's a clean one owner. <laughs> this is nuts. So now, he's got his video, he's got his content. The next move is we're gonna grab the K-Max again, come over here, sling this thing back up, and take it over to the uh, parking lot and load it on the trailer. So, still got one more cool thing to watch. But, man, that was... This wouldn't have been better centered if we would have loaded it ourselves. Know, yeah. ourselves. That was the fourth place. I owe you guys lunch. That's a damn good pilot. <laughs> Chat, owe you lunch. I owe you guys lunch. <laughs> no, just for helping me. Oh, I could have done this. Like you only owe that lunch. I, I could have done this by myself. Let's pull his straps oh, off. Hey there. <laughs> Oh, his. 
Uh, we might be taking the front straps. 